Hello everyone. We are going to uh, continue our discussion of the energy methods chapter uh, with this discussion of the first law of th thermodynamics. Now it may seem a little bit uh, surprising to many of you that why uh, in a course of advanced mechanics of solids uh, we are going back to uh, thermodynamics. So uh, believe it or not uh, in the entire development of mechanics uh, thermodynamics plays a very very important role. Now this may not be apparent from the from the ideas that we developed during our undergraduate studies where uh, subjects like thermodynamics, fluid mechanics and heat transfer are taught uh, almost uh, in isolation from subjects like mechanics, uh, mechanics of solids or mechanics of materials, elasticity and so on. But uh, there is a very very important uh, consideration uh, of thermodynamics within mechanics. In fact, the uh, the proper systematic theories of mechanics uh, cannot be developed. It simply cannot be developed without the proper consideration of thermodynamics. All right. So if you ever go on to uh, do higher studies, you will inevitably have to study a, uh, a course on continuum mechanics, and there you will see that how important the, the considerations of thermodynamics uh, is. Anyway, for our present purposes, we are not going to uh, to go into such detail, but we will have to consider uh, at least the first law of therm thermodynamics and the and the consequences of it. Okay, so. Uh, uh, so usually we know from our undergraduate studies that the first law of thermodynamics basically tells us that uh, the total work done by the external forces uh, when added to the total heat transfer given by Q uh, into a body that should be equal to the change in the, the change in the internal energy and the change in the kinetic energy okay so, uh, so please do not think right away that this u is the potential energy or anything like that okay so this right now is the internal energy okay the change in the internal energy And this is heat transfer to the body. Now, in a variational sense, we can write this, we can rewrite this as uh, Now, please note that if we consider uh, this change in internal energy referred to some datum, then we did not keep on writing this delta. So this variation, uh, the variational operator will take care of it. Uh, so in the subsequent developments, we'll, we'll just be using this uh, delta u. Now, uh, for the kind of situations that we'll be dealing with here, uh, will be mostly interested in adiabatic processes. Okay. For which our delta Q is going to be zero. Because an adiabatic process is one in which the, there is no heat transfer to the body. All right. Next, for a body that is in static equilibrium, there is no change in the kinetic energy of the body. Okay, so delta K is equal to zero. So of course, our, the first variation of delta K that is also equal to zero. So what we are left with really is delta WE is equal to delta U. So the first variation of the work done by the external forces that is equal to the first variation of the internal energy 
mind you only for the specialized case which we are considering here that the uh, that, that that's an adiabatic process whatever the changes is going on it's an adiabatic process and the body is in static equilibrium of course uh, in our in our previous lecture we have already been considering the static equilibrium case when we talked about the application of the principle of virtual work to a deformable body so there is very much consistent with that development okay so uh, uh, so what we what we can rewrite this as uh, so what we can do is this internal energy we can rewrite this as in terms of the the internal energy density per unit volume so that uh, this is u not dv so this is internal energy per unit volume per unit volume and we can uh, can of course take this first variation within the integration sign uh, okay so uh, it is this form which we'll be using subsequently now next we are going to discuss uh, the potential energy and you will see slowly how all of these apparently disparate concepts they tie in together okay as we keep on developing our theory you'll see how these things uh, i mean apparently right now they seem quite disparate uh, disjointed but uh, you will see how they are nicely connected okay so uh, so i hope there sh there should not be any undue uh, uh, apprehensions about the considerations of the potential energy unlike the first law of thermodynamics because in a mechanics course you are all familiar with the considerations of potential energy uh, and you all, all know this to a certain extent the the underlying concepts nevertheless we'll just recap it uh, in the language that we want uh, for our subsequent developments. So first of all, what we say is that a mechanical system is said to be conservative uh, if the virtual work corresponding to a virtual displacement of the system completely around any closed path, and that is a very important concept, it must be around a closed path, and that's zero. Okay, so mechanical system is said to be conservative if the virtual uh, the the virtual work uh, associated with the virtual displacements so so i'm not writing the entire thing all of, all these uh, statements and as in a very formal nice way is already present in our lecture notes uh, so if the virtual work associated uh, with any closed path is zero all right now uh, beyond what we because uh, i mean you know this thing even from your uh, high school physics studies uh, but what we are going to say something new about it is that uh, it could be conservative the mechanical system could be conservative in two senses the first is the static sense and the second is the kinetic sense so conservative in two sense first is the static sense and then the kinetic sense so when we say it is static sense so basically when the virtual displacements uh, they are executed with infinitesimal speed okay so the virtual displacements they are executed with uh, at infinitesimal speed and when the virtual displacements are not necessarily when the virtual displacements are not necessarily executed with infinitesimal speed uh, we say that it is conservative in the kinetic sense okay so just a subtle point of difference between the two now uh, 
let us consider the virtual work associated only with the external forces. Now, if it so happens that such a virtual work, okay, so, so let's say the virtual work uh, associated with the external forces. Uh, so, uh, so if this thing is independent of the path, okay, independent of path, so what that basically means uh, is that independent of path means the external work done will be only and only dependent on the terminal configurations that is the initial configuration and the final configuration okay so basically what it means is that it is dependent on the terminal configurations all right so uh, in 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 that in such a situation what we say that the external forces are conservative and in such a case this we it can be expressed as a point function okay now uh, some of you uh, have gone through the previous lectures uh, will your brain will immediately go back to the concept of the work function and i'll discuss about that immediately so uh, before that i'll just write this that this we can be represented as in terms of a potential okay so uh, where the dependence is on this x representing the final configuration we do not write the the dependence explicitly on the initial configuration because that only adds an uh, additive constant okay so for 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 changes that is that doesn't really matter okay it's like the consideration of a datum uh, now uh, earlier we had talked about the work function so there uh, we had to talk about the work function in terms of, uh, we had to define it in, in set theoretic terms saying that it was the least upper bound uh, uh, for uh, for two configurations uh, of concern and there we had made a distinction between the work done the in general what could be a path dependent work done and the work function now as we have written it you note that if indeed our external forces are conservative okay so this happens if the external forces are conservative or we say that if such a thing happens then the external forces are conservative so uh, our we it is independent of path which means that if if it is if we are indeed working under such circumstances that the external forces are conservative that the w is independent of path then the work done uh, the virtual work done that is indeed itself the work function and in such a situation naturally because it is only dependent on the initial and the final configuration uh, we can define it in terms of a potential okay so had this been path dependent then such a representation in terms of a potential so where this please note that this ve it is the uh, it is the potential energy uh, i mean the potential energy of which will uh, enable us to obtain this we okay uh, and this is this is referred to as the point function okay so uh, very specifically this is the potential energy associated uh, with the external forces so this is a point function it's a point function and uh, it is the potential energy of external forces okay so uh, as you can see the the concept of the potential energy it uh, emerges in a nice and clean fashion if we if we if we set up our definitions like this okay so uh, first of all we are considering this entire mechanical system to be conservative then we are uh, we are we are thinking about only the external forces uh, when the external forces are conservative we are considering this virtual work uh, it is independent of path it is dependent on terminal configurations which has a direct connection uh, which means that the work done has a direct connection with the work function uh, or it is the work function itself and because uh, the work function is just dependent on the terminal configurations we have this uh, equivalent representation in terms of a point function uh, 
uh, which is nothing but the potential energy of the external forces. So there's a nice smooth transition to the concept. In absolutely the same fashion, we can have, now we can consider the work done due to internal forces. And here also, uh, if it so happens that it is, uh, if it turns out to be independent of path, then again, it is dependent only on the terminal configurations. And again, we'll have the Wi to be equal to so any work done for for two such configurations uh, with the with the internal forces conservative so the internal forces conservative uh, will have this uh, equivalent representation in terms of a point function which is nothing but the potential energy of internal forces. Sorry about this little bit of a clutter here. Try to fix it. Okay, now we have considered these two things separately. Uh, suppose we are to consider this together, then if both the internal and external forces are conservative, both internal and external forces are conservative then uh, then the total virtual work that is WE plus WI, uh, that is the total W, that will be given by another point function. Okay, so where again, uh, you note that we are only representing this X denoting the final configuration and not explicitly writing the dependence on the initial configuration with the understanding that for variational purposes, uh, that initial configuration will only add an additive constant so it will not really come into the picture so and the important thing to note here is that this is a point function referred to as the potential energy uh, associated with both the internal and the external forces and of course it must be true that this is v this pi okay so this is the greek capital letter pi okay so uh, this is equal to v e uh, x plus v e i x All right. So uh, in the in the next lecture, we'll be talking about uh, the concept of the all important concept of strain energy, uh, which will pervade again uh, through all of our discussions of advanced mechanics of solids. Uh, so uh, and and in general uh, mechanics. So what we'll say uh, we'll again discuss this, but just as a precursor, we'll uh, I'll just state here that uh, this uh, this strain energy is associated with uh, certainly with elastic systems and uh, whatever we have discussed here uh, especially that distinction we made about uh, conservativeness in the kinetic sense and static sense that will come into the picture very nicely uh, because we'll start our next discussions uh, with the with the understanding that a mechanical system is said to be elastic if the internal forces are conservative in the kinetic sense okay so that will be the connection between this lecture and the next lecture with the, this understanding which i repeat that a mechanical system is said to be conserved to be elastic if the internal forces are conservative in the kinetic sense okay so we'll, we'll continue with our discussions of strain energy in the next lecture thank you very much